We are also recording now. We are live. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, we have prob people having problem uh, uh, getting in on the Facebook. Oh, on the Zoom link. Zoom link. They receive out the register. Invalid. And they receive a message, invalid message. Okay. Um, okay. Should they just join us by Facebook? Is Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, you can do that. Let's start with this beautiful video that was created by National Day of Prayer. America has lived through many a cold and dark night, when the cupped hands of prayer were our only shield against the extinction of courage. Though that flame has flickered from time to time, it burns brightest when we are willing. Ronald Reagan penned those words in his 1986 presidential proclamation, and they are just as true today as they were back then. Since the original 13 colonies, the leadership of this great nation have always considered prayer to be a great privilege. We can make a, the true meaning of prayer much more important in the lives of all of our children. That power is very much open to us. We believe that the Almighty hears our prayers and answers those who seek Him. The story of the National Day of Prayer begins in earnest 70 years ago. 70 years? That's right. On February 3rd, 1952, the young fiery preacher stood atop the steps of America's capital and challenged our leaders to pray. I ask the United States Senate and Congress to request the President once again in our hour of crisis when we stand on the abyss of national destruction and catastrophe to call our people to prayer. And that fire still burns on today, stronger and with just as much passion. Shortly after, President Truman signed the National Day of Prayer into law. We join in offering our thanks to the Providence. which has guided and sustained us. I, Harry S. Truman, President of the United States of America, do hereby appoint a day of prayer. But this would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of a group of dedicated believers who championed the cause with Congress to amend the law. Since 1988, when founding chairwoman Vonette Bright stood beside President Ronald Reagan as he signed the amendment into law. We have seen faithful leaders from all walks of life humbly lead the charge to mobilize America in biblically unified prayer. To encourage and equip believers all across America to fill heaven with rich prayers for our nation and each other. We, we are, are the, the now generation. generation. And we're calling all Americans to stand together. United. united as we set aside time to pray in humility, with fasting and thanksgiving for the beauty and wonder of this great land and lift our hearts and voices to the Lord. And Lord, we ask that you grant our government leaders the wisdom they need to act with integrity and bless our military with divine protection, courage, and dependence on you. And Lord, we ask that you would strengthen your people who are in the media and that you'd restore character and ethics to those who produce content. Go and make my school safe. We're inviting you to become a part of this rich history. Help us mobilize our efforts by continuing the wonderful tradition of publicly praying in America the first Thursday in May. Throughout America's wonderful history, prayer has been woven into the fabric of our nation, and the Lord has been our strength, our refuge, and our source. Jesus is the liberty that sets captives free to live and love God with the destiny that he alone has designated for each of us, individually and as a country. 
and as a nation, Lord, we humbly ask you to pour out your love, life, and liberty. Amen. Love, Amen. life, and liberty. That is the theme of the 70th National Day of Prayer. And we are very honored to um, all be on here and to pray on this day. So thank you very much. We're going to get started uh, with the shofars. And we have some shofars prepared. Uh, and it's actually seven different shofars that are, let me see that. I'm going to, so that you can hear that. Let me share my screen again. Oh, it's, okay, it's perfect. Good. And so seven shofars for the 70 years that uh, we uh, have been here praying in the United States. Hallelujah. And with this, I want to invite Marielle to start with our official welcome. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are so good to us. We recognize you, Yahweh, Abba, Father God, seated on the throne with Yeshua, Jesus, our soon returning King, seated at your right hand. And we're so grateful to you for your amazing love that you pour out upon each one of us, Lord, in your presence is fullness of joy. And we come before you on bended knee, humbly, God, with hearts of worship, fervent hearts of prayer, scriptural declarations. Oh, God, thank you that you are turning your ear right now to hear our voices, our cries, our petitions. Lord, on behalf of California, united with National Day of Prayer, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, please lead and direct our hearts, our thoughts, and all that comes out of our mouths. We bless you, and we just say it's all about you. As we proclaim love, life, and liberty over California and across this nation, Amen and amen. Praise God. Now, we just want to welcome everyone to this call. We're so very excited. Oh, my goodness. Please join in prayer agreement with us as different participants, speakers share their hearts. And Wilking is going to introduce the next, uh, the participants. And praise God. We have a fabulous lineup. You can go to our Pray California Facebook page and look and, and see the program and also all the different participants and the times they will be speaking. So we thank you for joining us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Maria. <laughs> um, what we are going to do is we will introduce a block of different uh, speakers that will pray and we will introduce them. And then after the end of the introduction, they will go one after another for this segment of this prayer call. So it's very simple. Uh, and we invite you to join with us and to stay during this whole little bit over two hours uh, that you stay in intercession with us for the United States of America as we are coming together in prayer. Thank you. And Wolfgang, are you going to introduce in the order of everyone who's going to be praying? Um, well, yeah, we, uh, I definitely can do that. We will have first uh, Jeff Daly uh, and then uh, Chris Leeper and Amy Stirr. Um, but before that, we are going to have uh, some uh, praise and worship. 
Valerie House, right there in Lake County at, at Pastors Greg and Amy, at Pastors Greg and Kate Hartman's church, where they're all gathered together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Marielle, uh, are we going to have our protection prayer first with Sylvia? Before worship, yes, Sister Sylvia Johnson. She is our California National Day of Prayer Director. Hi, how are <laughs> you doing today? Thank you, Marielle. Thank you, Wolfgang. So great to be able to join you and all of those that are here on this virtual National Day of Prayer. I'm so, so honored to participate as we pray and connect across the state. And uh, just real briefly, uh, again, like they said, I'm Sylvia Johnson. I'm the California State Leader for the National Day of Prayer Task Force. And today, the National Day of Prayer is being observed in all of our 50 states. Many of our events here in California are being held at churches, parks, city hall, and virtual like this one. And as we all know, the National Day of Prayer is an annual day of observance held on the first Thursday of every May. It was designated by the United States Congress. And it's a day when people are asked to turn to God in prayer. And our president, he is required by law to sign a proclamation each year encouraging all Americans to pray on this day. And just a little quick history on the National Day of Prayer. This year marks 70 years since Reverend Billy Graham stood on the Capitol steps in February of 1952 and called for Congress and the president to establish a day of prayer. And by April of that year, President Truman signed the legislation into public law. So through the decades, Americans have observed the National Day of Prayer in all 50 states and in US territories, praying for our nation. And the interesting thing, these prayers have not stopped We've been through wars, we've been through a time of peace, political shifts, celebrations, and now a global pandemic. In all circumstances, we have prioritized prayer as a first response and not a last resort. So I'm honored to lead and to pray into the great and amazing things God's doing. And so I've been asked to pray, praise and protection over the California National Day of Prayer, the events and the leaders. Praise you, Lord. So I want to pray, not just for California, but for all of us. And so I want to pray out of Ephesians 6 for protection. Father, this day, the National Day of Prayer, we again choose you. And Father, we choose today to put on your complete set of armor that you provided for us so that we will be protected as we fight against the evil strategies of the accuser, knowing that our hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms, for they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, Father, we choose today to put on the armor of protection that you provided so graciously to each one of us, your children. And we understand, God, that we are destined for all great things and we will rise victorious. And so today, each one of us, us that are leading, that are, that are interceding and that are praying, and even over our state and our nation, Father, we choose this day to put on the belt of truth that strengthens us and enabling us to stand in triumph. Father, today we put on holiness and righteousness as a breastplate which covers our heart and we're standing on our feet today, fully alert and fully prepared. We're ready to share the gospel of peace across our state and our nation. And in every battle, we know we are to take the shield of faith. It's like a wraparound shield because it's able to extinguish every blazing arrow coming at us from the evil one. And today we also embrace the power of salvation. It's full deliverance, like a helmet to protect our thoughts from all lies. And we take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. We're praying together passionately in the Holy Spirit as we constantly intercede 
for our state and our nation. Amen. 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 For your goodness and your mercy. And we bless each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Let's continue with worship. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. Yeshua, ah, 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 is the kingdom yours? Is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. Yours is the kingdom and yours is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. Yeshua. Ah, 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 there is freedom, we just declare today, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom reigns in this place over California, hallelujah, showers of mercy and grace, they are Falling on every face, there is freedom. So lift your eyes to heaven, there is freedom. Lift your eyes to heaven, there's so much freedom. Thank you for your liberty. Freedom reigns in this place over California. Showers of mercy and grace. They are falling on every face. There is freedom. Jesus reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is Bye. 
Jesus reigns. Amen. Thank you, Sister Valerie, our Pray California County Prayer Leader. Amazing worshiper. We're so grateful that you are part of this team, that you are part of this beautiful God family. And now we have prayer for the church with Jeff Daly, who is the founder and director of National Day of Prayer and a pastor followed with Chris Leeper down in San Diego. Jeff is up in Northern California. Chris Leeper is also a pastor, director of 40 Days of Hope, and also part of the Prayer Forest. And we got the, the north to the south covered and everything in between. Glory, hallelujah. He'll be praying for the unity of the church. And then we have Amy Storr. She and her husband, Matt, pastor a church at the, the River Church. And she is actually in New York with her grandbabies, but she's joining us to also offer prayer for the church to awaken, action, be bold. We need to be bold because this is the first year in 70 years that National Day of Prayer was not allowed at our nation's capital. So the church must rise up. So we just say thank you so much and take it away, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Muriel. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Wolfgang. Thank you all that put this together. Lord, we just uh, follow your word. Your word could not be more clear. You spoke to King Solomon 3,000 years ago, and you speak to each of us today. It's a call on each of our lives, and it's in 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. And Lord, here we are even now in the drought, in the pestilence that is referred to in verse 13, when you say that you will send the drought, when you, you, you remove the rain, and then when you send locusts, when you send pestilence, your solution then follows in 14. Verse 14, it's that if my people, and Lord, those of us who are on this call today are your people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And so here we are there at the prayer piece. And then, Lord, the next part is turn. And if they will turn from their wicked ways, and Lord, we all fall short of your glory. We all have issues to resolve, old residues of old patterns. You say then, if we will repent and turn from our wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven forgive our sin and heal our land. And Lord, there are many sins in California as in all states in this nation, Lord. We have fallen away from you. And yet you give us this solution, Lord. Let us today recommit to your word, recommit to your solution, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing. As Yeshua said in John 15, five, without you, without your holy word, without your solution, we cannot resolve the drought. We cannot resolve the moral pestilence in our schools, in the government itself, Lord. So we need your solution. And I just pray today that many will hear this all across this nation, that the church, the body of Christ, the ecclesia will awaken to the day and the time like the sons of Issachar, and they will repent and follow your solution. Each person especially in the house of God where judgment begins. 
I just pray this in Jesus' holy name, Yeshua's holy name. Amen and amen. 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 I'm focusing on unity and I'm going to read Ephesians 4. Uh, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is over all, through all, and in you all. Lord, we come before you today. Lord, how have we divided Based on that scripture, how have we divided into 30,000 denominations? We have made doctrine, uh, perspectives, methods, uh, ethnic groups. Lord, we confess our sin before you today. We've, we've made denominations, churches, ministries our dividing point. We have made dividing points where you have not made them, Lord. We have preached John 17. And Ephesians 4 with a private application and a private interpretation. We have made all these things more important than unity, obedience, and love. And we have been found to be hypocrites, Lord. And we have prayed and you are not answering our prayers because we are hypocrites. We say your word, we say to obey it, but we do not obey it. Lord, I pray that you would use the judgments on our nation to bring us back to unity of the Spirit, to bring us to your word and to what the apostles carried in the first century that turned the world upside down and brought the gospel, the known gospel, the gospel to the known world. Lord, I pray for the manifestation of one new man, of a holy nation that disciples nations. I pray that heaven would come to earth and that you would fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Amen. You Amen. would fill them, Lord, through your people, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, we agree, Lord. Thank you for the grace, for the repentance. Open our hearts to see. Lord, we thank you for your precious blood over your church. And Lord, we're so grateful today that you have made us and called us as your church, the glorious church of the living God. On that day of Pentecost, when your people were gathered and you came like a wind, Ruach HaKodesh, we're asking you to blow again. We thank you for the beginning of that day that the church was born, that we are a part of the family of God, the house of God, the bride of Christ. And Lord, today I wanna to pray as we make some declarations about your church. Lord, I wanna pray for three things, that your precious people would awake, arise, and step in with your courage and boldness. Lord, thank you for John chapter 17, that prayer that you have prayed. We thank you that you are making us one with you and one with each other your glorious bride. Lord, we thank you, thank you, thank you today that you're showing us how to walk as your people. And we pray, Lord, that your church would awake, awake to righteousness, awake to intimacy with you. Would you draw us to yourself? Would you draw us to the secret place where you would baptize us afresh in your love, that we would awake, 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 Lord, as your beloveds to walk in partnership with you. And Lord, we pray that your Amen. people would arise, arise and shine for our yeah. light to come. We thank yeah. you for holiness and Lord, for boldness and courage, a fresh baptism to open our mouths and to proclaim your word in a dark season. And Lord, we thank you Christ, that you are stepping us into unity and oneness, that as a united church, filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaiming your word, we will unite a divided nation as your glorious church. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to do it today in agreement. Would you teach us how? In Jesus' name.
Yeah. 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 So far flowing. Amen. Amen. And in the next segment, first, family of God. First, we will hear Robert Bob Wolf, a very dear Messianic Jewish brother with whom I have participated in many significant prayer meetings. He's the founder of Majestic Glory Ministries and signed the oath. He will pray for and about Israel. The next group of prayer leaders will address the family according to God's design. We will hear from David Andrade, a dear friend who had his office right next to mine at the U.S. Center of World Missions for 11 years. He's the founder of RTV International Ministries, and he's on the Pray California board. He will pray for husbands and fathers. His wife, Cassie Andrade, is also with RTV International Ministries, and she's also on the Pray California board. Just recently, she, alongside David, Marielle, and myself, who are the four hosts of the Global Call 2021, The Office of the Prophets, a 13-hour TV production in four segments. She will pray for wives. Next is dear sister, Sherry Bonard. We have participated over many years in the yes. annual Pray California conferences. She's a very precious intercessor, a leader, founder of City Gates Pray, and a member of the Prayer Council of the U.S. Sherry will pray for children, including prodigals. And after Sherry, we will enter into a time of worship with Chris Lipa and his family, Carlene, his wife, and Sophia, their daughter. And Sophia is going to bless us with a special worship song, Spirit Breakout. And we all want the Holy Spirit to break out and in California. Robert Wolf now. Amen. Restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You have cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root and it filled the land. The hills were covered with its shadow and the mighty cedars with its boughs. She sent out her boughs to the sea and her branches to the river. Father God, this passage out of Psalm 80 is a picture of you taking Israel out of Egypt and planting her in the promised land and watching her take root and that vine become uh, rich and luxurious and spreading out from the sea on one side up to the river on the other side, showing how Israel has been brought to fruition, Lord, out of your design. We pray, Father God, for that nation. Our hearts are with Israel. And the, the interesting parallel that the state of California has with Israel in terms of climate, in terms of geography, in terms of Death Valley and, and the Dead Sea and the mountain ranges and the mountains around Jerusalem, Father God. Uh, there is such a, a, a visceral tie between our state and that nation, Father God. And so we, we understand the climate, we understand the food, we understand the atmosphere. Lord, now teach us to understand the people, your people, your children, Father God. And bless our state as you bless that na nation of Israel, Father God. And as you are delivering Israel out of bondage, Father God, we pray for the same spirit to rest over the state of California, that those forces that would try to limit the move of the house of God, of the spirit of God, of the very church, the ecclesia, the synagogue, the congregation, where we tabernacle, Father God. We now release your ruach over this state, Father God, as we release it over, over Jerusalem, and we pray for your presence to come and to fill Amen. us with your glory, Father God, and bring California into this new hour of release of your ruach. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Yeah. David Andrade, and would everyone please limit your prayers to your allotted time? We're behind the schedule. So thank you so much. God bless you. David Andrade. Yes. Our Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, as men of God. Husbands and future husbands and fathers of the families that we are bound by covenant and to others around us 
uh, to this generation that we serve as spiritual fathers to the fatherless, the orphaned, the abandoned, and children of this world. Here is as we pray and declare your righteous ways and covenant of order upon our land, the world, our nation, your church, and our families and children. As husbands, we thank you for our wives, life covenant partners, best friends, helpmates, and mothers of our children. We declare our families are blessed because we submit to your word Wives, and order and call covenant partners, best friends, helpmates, and mothers of our children. We declare our families are also one can be over uh, Ecclesiastics 4.12. Also one can be overpowered by two together can put up resistance and a three ply cord doesn't easily snap. Lord God, you put our church together to be the foundations of uh, in this world for all to see. As husbands, Lord God, we are to love our wives and we need to be kind in every situation that arises even when it is not easy. Ephesians 5, 28 to 30, that how husbands ought to love their wives in the same way as they do their own bodies. Anybody who loves his wife is loving himself. No one ever hates his own body, but feeds it and takes care of it, just as Christ does the church, because Amen. we are all parts of his body. We submit to your ways because you're God, our God, you are kind, uh, you, and love fulfills your law, and the spirit, spirit of requirements, according to Romans 13, 8, do not be in debt to anyone except for obligation to love each other. Whosoever loves another person also fulfills the law. Because when we sought after a wife, we were drawn to the beauty by her heart. And according to Songs of Solomon 4, 9 to 10, you have captured my heart, my sister, my bride. You have captured my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one strand of your necklace. How beautiful is your loving, my sister, my bride. Your loving is so much better than wine and the fragrance better than any perfume. We, you have brought to us a wife to build us up in the image of Christ, according to 1 John 4, 12. Amen. No is... Amen, David. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you, Brother David. You're a pastor and you're an uh, apostle. We just say thank you. Sister Kathy, jump Hi. right in. I will. Thank Father, you. Father, we pray for all those that are called of God to be a wife to one husband and mother of the family with children, especially here in America. Your word says you have blessed the partnership of a wife to be a helpmate to her husband. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish in the sea, over the fowl in the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Then he can always, the husband can always be safely trusted by her wife. In Proverbs 31, 11, 12, it says the heart of her husband does safely trust her so that he will have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And that his husband will never speak evil of her husband. That the wife will never speak evil of her husband. That will always lift him up and encourage him. In 1 Timothy 3.11. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Lord, send your spirit to every Christian family. Let them be the dwelling of threefold cords that cannot be broken. In Genesis, it says, therefore shall a man leave his mother and his father and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. That is the estate that wives will pursue holiness in how that pertains to marriage and that our character must always reflect Christ. In Timothy, it says, likewise, that they be in behavior as become a holiness, not false accusers, not given to too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, 
keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Wives are to be submissive to their husbands in the things that pertain to God. When hard choices must be made, even when the decisions in challenge is challenging. Colossians 3.18 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit into the, unto the Lord. That wives mm. should show proper respect toward her husband, especially when the presence of others and their children. In Ephesians, it says, However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Wives may be empowered to use their gifts toward a blessed, successful marriage, one that brings honor to God. It says that in Proverbs 19, 14. Mm -hmm. Her eyes will always be only toward her husband, even when challenges arise. Hebrews 13, mm -hmm. 4 says, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God. God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Lord, Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Don't mean to cut you off, but we, you know, we really need to stick to this no program. And, okay. and some of you are, are praying shorter times, and we really appreciate that because God hears the heart. He loves when we honor one yeah. another. So a couple of you, I, you have shorter times, but thank you for your grace and mercy. We just say thank you, Father. Amen. Sherry, sister Sherry. All right. Uh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. And Lord, I want to lift up <clears throat> our children. We know that you're faithful in everything that you do. And Lord, I pray that you would protect our nation's children from the evil one. Lord, keep them healthy and help them to thrive in everything that they do. Bless the parents of our children, Lord. Give them wisdom. Direct their steps in the way that you want them to go in raising and nurturing and bringing them to know and to love you and to worship and adore you. And Father, I pray for our nation's prodigals, Lord, and the parents' hearts <clears throat> who are hurting over prodigals. Lord, may you give our prodigals a heart of brokenness in such a way, Lord, that they would be drawn back to you. Lord, use what you must to save our children from an eternity apart from you, no matter what the cost, oh God. And again, Lord, I, I pray against the enemy's desire to have them. I pray that you would rescue our prodigals from the power of Satan and from the world and give them life and use them to advance the gospel and strengthen other believers, oh God. And Lord, I pray that the prodigals in our nations will know the truth of who you are and that the truth will set them free. Draw them back to you. In these things, Lord God, we do pray in Jesus' magnificent and mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sherry. Amen. Jesus!
Amen. Yes, Lord, we need you. Holy Spirit, break out in California. Let it begin in us and through us, oh God. We love you. We need you. Come, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into our households. Each one of the 58 counties in California, we need you. And Lord, this next segment on abortion, God, oh God, you hate the shedding of innocent blood, and so do we. And so now, in this next section, we have Precious, first of all, repentance and prayer for the unborn. Sister Olga Herman, 21 plus year close confidant friend. We started out on the Glow International Board and the Glow International Board together. She's also the founder and director of Life Teens International. She's also on the United States Prayer Council. And then we have uh, Brian Johnston, he is the director of the California Governor's Prayer Team, also the director of California Pro-Life Council. He's very involved in Hollywood. Also, he and Olga are both authors, and he is going to be speaking about medical killing. And then Chris's sister worship leader of, up there in Lake County, and she, Valerie House, she's also our Pray California County Prayer Leader. So thank you so much. Take it away, Olga. Thank you, Marielle. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we come before you with a really heavy heart. We don't even know why we have to come before you with this, this horrible mess that we're living in God we love our children Lord and we're blessed to come together from pray for life at this national day of prayer you told us you were the God of the living and not the dead and Israel was exiled for 70 years then re then returned to Israel and may the U.S. also on this anniversary the seventh 70th year anniversary of the national day of prayer uh, when it became official. May the USA also return, Lord. We know that you're doing something really big. And we realize that we've given authority to the spirit of death, uh, Moloch, over California and over our nation. We are living here in California in the heart. It's, it's the stronghold of abortion, God. And when we began spilling the blood of our most innocent by making abortion legal, we gave up our authority. You've called us here today to repent before you, to clean our hearts and deeds of this terrible crime against the Father. We thank you for restoring all the pillars of society you've established for our health, for people's well being and healing. To the church, we offer ourselves to ask the church a place of healing and holiness with a father's and mother's heart to save our babies from death and their parents from lifelong grief for the loss of aborted children. Fill our families with your love to understand the preciousness and perfect plan you gave every member when you breathed life at conception. Bring our schools back to your word that God created male and female. You said your first commandment, you gave us a blessing and you said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. You gave us children as a reward. So we speak to the laws of the land that to, to kill our babies at our universities, to stop in the name of Jesus and our colleges and wherever they want to just destroy our children. To our government, Lord, we thank you for the many that we've, we have placed in authority that don't even know you, Lord. But we thank you, Lord, that your word says, the fool says in our heart, there is no God. Awaken them, Lord, awaken them and help our, the voters of this nation to choose wisely and make null and void every foolish law that violates yours. Your law is the supreme law of the land. We speak to the media, airwaves, and written words. Use them, Lord, to shout life, life, life from the heavens and over the earth. Lord Jesus, let wealth overflow to bless the orphans and the widows, those abandoned even before birth and those abandoned at childbearing, that no couple would feel the need to abort their blessing. Lord, we mostly ask you to take back the medical industry, to turn back to its original mandate for healing and not killing. We say to every mountain of iniquity to move and be cast into the sea as we stand on the mountains of righteousness. 
how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings the good news. Amen. 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 In the name of our Lord Jesus, our Amen. God. Amen. 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 Well, Father, we thank you that you have given us a country which is built on your principles, on the self-evident truths that you've made known in nature. Our founders said they wanted to build on the laws of nature and of nature's God. And one of the first is the fact that we are made by God. That's a self-evident truth. The government did not give us our lives. The government is empowered really for one thing, to protect the gifts that you have given us, the most precious being life. We thank you, Father, that this challenge is before us. It is a great challenge. And we know that those who should be caring for life, who even before the founding of this nation, who swore, they swore they would never harm the vulnerable innocent. They would never kill even if asked, and they would not do an abortion because that's a vulnerable human life. They now have been changed by this cultural commitment to killing. The medical profession has become the opposite of its purpose. They have become professional killers. I thank you, Lord, that in Roe v. Wade and in Doe v. Bolton, that despite his confusion, that Justice Blackman and the other judges prohibited mothers from killing their own children, that the feminists had requested that. They had requested the right to do their own abortions, and that was explicitly condemned with boldness. What a terrible, frightening thing for mothers to destroy their own children. And so Justice Blackman said, no, there will only be one official killer, and that will be the medical profession. And the medical profession can do it whenever they felt appropriate. It was entirely to them. And he thus changed our society and changed the medical profession. Nevertheless, as Roe v. Wade looms before these judges, the temptation is, and we see it daily from this current president, to encourage mothers to be the killers, to no longer go to a physician. Thank you, Father. We ask you to please open the eyes of your people and redeem this nation from its sin. Amen. Amen. Brother Brian, you froze up for, for about 30 seconds. You, you froze for, oh. your voice froze. That's why I just responded. I wish I knew which 30. Okay. You're within your time frame. So, so praise God. We just praise say God. thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that Brian has written a book. What's the name of that book, Brian? It's called Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. And that's the real issue. Yes, we're killing babies, but there's, there's particular killers. And yes. it's the medical profession. And when the church wakes up to what's going on, that's the issue at hand. Those who should be healers are now free to be killers. And that cancer has spread throughout the profession. The dismissal of other vulnerable human lives is very much with us and the church is sleeping. Amen, and the church is being silent. Father, wake up the pastors, God, and that they will speak boldly from the pulpit, that there can be repentance and healing for these women who have been carrying the shame and guilt. Lord God, we call the pastors to become bold. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Brian. I recommend that book highly. It's about to be, I ordered one waiting for it, glory to God. Sister Valerie, who herself and her husband, Terry, have adopted, they adopted a son. So Valerie. Amen. Father, we just pray right now that every family that wants to adopt would be able to adopt. Uh, that you open up the provision, rain down your blessings. God, we ask that you would make the process easy in Jesus' name. 
Father, we ask that you would bring the children to the families and the families to the children, that you would connect the mothers and the fathers with these precious ones crying out to be mothered and fathered. Lord, I ask that you would open the eyes of the birth mothers that are abortion vulnerable to the option of adoption in Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you, Father, that you're doing that even right now as we pray that lives are being saved, lives are in the balance, even right now, God. Those in the womb were crying out, God, that the birth mothers and fathers, grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, would desire to save lives, to save the life of even this one we're contending for right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask that you would give grace to the Christian community, to receive these babies and children into the churches, even those that have aged out of the system. Father, I pray for a spirit of adoption to come upon your church like never before. Father, I'm asking, Lord, that there would not be one orphan in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, finally, I'd like to ask that you bless all adopted families. Give them the grace they need. Some of them need respite desperately. Lord, would you come in and strengthen the adopted families, Lord, with everything that they need, that no one would lack. In Jesus' name we pray. And we cover adoption with the blood of Jesus in the state of California right now. Thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. 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 We agree. And we all together, let's speak life, life, abundant life over California right now. So many people, so millions of people want to adopt. And so we just say, thank you, Father, that there are places that mothers can take their children and drop them off in California in a safe place, safe alliance. We just say, thank you, Father, for that. If you haven't signed a moral outcry, please Go sign themoraloutcry.com. Let your voice be heard to the Supreme Court as far as saying no to adoption, to abortion, yes to adoption. Glory to God. This next section is the government section. And we, uh, Carolyn Sudi, the Southwest Regional Director for Glow International over many states, well, over California and Hawaii um, is going to be sharing. We've known Cal um, Carolyn for so many years. She's been part of our hearts and part of Craig California for so long. And then we have the Melody Divine. Melody is um, with a, she is a founder of PIER, the Peer Institute. And she's also an integral, integral part of the prayer force that many of us are a part of also. And she is a former attorney as Pastor Jeff Daly is too. And go to Pray California, our website and read her bio y'all. It is pretty amazing what she was involved in in DC. And so she will be praying, Carolyn will be praying for Joe Biden, VP Kamala, Harris or Kamala, um, Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, Xavier Becerra, and California Senators. And then Melody will be praying for the United States Supreme Court justices. And then we have a video from Jim Garlow and Rosemary Schindler Garlow. They would love to be with us, but they are in Guatemala City right now. And the, so they sent this great video you don't want to miss that one either and then vicky norton she's going to be praying for god's choice of governor to replace gavin newsom etc uh, whatever is on her heart to pray for her three minutes vicky is the founder of wind and fire ministries and she ran for the senate and she is very involved in the po political governmental arena and we need more people like you vicky and then sue landry and she is the San Francisco 
Bay Area, over at least 10 counties for National Day of Prayer. She's been part of Pray California for so, so many years. And she sends out a, a, a newsletter, very informative. And she's going to be praying for the local government. So thank you so much. Please jump in, Carolyn. Thank you for joining us, everyone. And you're on mute, Sister Carolyn. Unmute, unmute. There we go. There you oh, go. Thank you. Father, we just come to the, you, you this day. Lord, first of all, as a body of Christ, we repent. Lord, you ask us to pray for those who are in government. You ask us to pray for our president, for each one. And Father, we have not held them up because we need to pray blessings. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for their salvation. And so, Father, I come this day and ask you to forgive us, that we will begin to begin to pray blessings. We will expect great things out of them, as you do each one of us. And so this, Lord, as we lift up, the government is on your shoulders. You have been given all authority, Lord. And so we pray this day that as you've given us this authority, as we pray, things have to happen in the government. We lift up President Biden to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, he professes to know you. But Lord, there has been a breakdown in action over belief. And so Lord, we pray that you will awaken him in the night. You will bring him dreams of who you are and the veil will be taken off all of those in government places. We pray for uh, those representatives out of California, for Nancy Pelosi, for Diane Feinstein, and for Pacera, Father God, that you will, you will awaken them at night. And Father, as we pray blessings on them, they will have the veil removed and they will come into a saving knowledge of who you are. And there will be a change, a change in their very belief system as the veil is removed and evil is taken out and they will come into that place to put in your policies, your heart, and be people of love that care about the people of the United States. Father, we thank you that you're able to do that. And we get, pray for the Senate, Lord, this day. And that's the equally represents each state. And yet, Lord, they have fallen away from bringing the part of the people to them. And so we ask that you touch their hearts. Lord, without an encounter with you, nothing will change. We pray for truth. And Father, as you walk in a room, the evil has to go because that's who you are. So Lord, we pray that when the Senate chambers opens in prayer, that God, you will enter in with your mighty power, your Holy Spirit, and things will begin to change. When they begin to bring forth the evil, it will not come forth. Their tongues will be uh, brought with confusion and only truth will be able to come forth. We thank you this day for what you're going to do as we as a church begin to pray the way we should for our government. And then Lord, we don't vote. So I pray this day that you will awaken the church because we must vote for those in government. We must vote those that stand for you and stand for righteousness. And Lord, we thank you that as we do that, things have to change because you will be in charge. And so we give you all the praise and glory for that. And we also pray for Chuck Schumer. We pray for Kamala Harris. And we pray for Mitch McConnell. God, I ask that you wake them up in the night and make yourself known to them. Father, I pray that every one of them will receive you as their Lord and Savior. That's the answer. That's the only answer that will take and change our government. And so this day, Lord, I'm praying for miracles. I'm praying that you be found all over Washington, D.C., because when you come, all things change. And so we thank you, Lord, and give you all the glory, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Abba, we stand on your word in Isaiah 33, 22. For you, O Lord, are our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. And you alone will save us. You are faithful and true. You sanctify us by your truth, and your word is truth. 
And Lord, I pray that the members of the Supreme Court would be convicted of your truth right now in this moment. I pray for their families, Lord, that their children would know you, that each and every one of them would come to a saving knowledge of you, that they would be convicted of your truth. And even out of the mouths of their children, Lord, they would come to know you. I pray for a holy fear of God to come upon them, that they would walk humbly with you, O Lord, do justly and love mercy. I pray that you would constrain them to perform their service with reverence and awe of you and your law. Convict them of the unrighteous and unjust rulings that have been made from the Supreme Court, the overreaching and the flawed interpretation and violation of your law, O Lord. Strengthen Clarence Thomas and Samuel Leto. We thank you for their willingness to stand for truth and to go against the tide. For Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and Neil Gorsuch, I pray, Lord, that you would convict them to not go astray or compromise. I pray that you would convict and expose any unrighteousness in the members of the bench, especially for John Roberts, Elena Kagan, Sonia Sotomayor, and Stephen Breyer. Help all of the justices to remember that they are dust, that you alone, O oh Lord, are judge and king and lawgiver, and may they bow down before you and seek your face, seek your wisdom when reviewing and hearing and deciding cases that impact this nation and its people. May they fear you, Father, that they and we would be blessed. Strengthen those on the bench who would understand our Constitution's founding and basis from your law and who would preserve the inalienable rights that you alone can and have given to us. Strengthen those who would preserve the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You have given us life and life abundantly, Father. May we as your body come together, rise up, and speak boldly for those who cannot speak for themselves. We long for your just and righteous reign, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would purify the members of the Supreme Court. May your refiner's fire burn off the dross, utterly destroy idolatry and false oaths, and lead and instruct them to rule rightly before you. Overturn unjust, unrighteous, and violent, vile rulings, we pray, in our day, Lord Jesus. And do not allow this institution to be further defiled through expansion. We ask that all efforts to pack the court will be stopped in your holy name. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we are going to see an example of how to pray for leadership. Hi, I'm Rosemary Schindler Garlow with my husband, Jim Garlow, and we're so honored to be part of the National Day of Prayer. I want to let you know I invited a special friend of mine to join us in this segment. I want to introduce to you our governor, Gavin Newsom, and we want to extend the blessing of God upon his life for life, liberty, and, and health and love. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our governor, Gavin Newsom. We thank you, Lord, that you love him and have called him before the foundations of this world to be a man of God and a man of prayer. So we stand against every wicked plot of the enemy that has usurped his, his purpose, his destiny, and we bind him to the will of Almighty God in Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, for pouring out your blessing upon him. Thank you, God, that you died and forgave his sins. Thank you that you've given us in this life mercy and grace and abundant pardon. So, Father, we, we just believe for great things, great transformation. As California comes forth into the light, let Governor Gasson, Gavin Newsom also know the light of your love and salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I tend to be a little bit more, she's the intercessor, I'm a little more the prophet. I have one word for him, it's called repent. God is going to bring judgment on those who do not get in conformity. That's all of us. The church, everyone listening to this, every single one of us. It's time to get in a perfect alignment with the will and the word and the way of God. Our nation is in crisis. Our state is in crisis. But God is not through with us yet. If we will conform to his way, repent of our ways, and conform to his way, he can release his blessings upon this country that he's now withholding them from. We're under, rightfully under judgment, which we deserve at the present time. 
we can move back to an arena of mercy to the extent that we bring ourselves in conformity with a spirit of repentance and with our understanding of embracing the commandments of Almighty God and walk in obedience to Him. So on this great day of prayer, it's important to not merely pray, but come with a spirit of repentance and even in a sense of identificational vicarious repentance on behalf of those leaders who have led us wrongly and made tragic decisions and done great harm to our country. We actually repent in behalf of what has been done by leaders that have done things that should not be done. So we speak blessing over America after a spirit of repentance comes upon the church first and then a spiritual way moves across our nation, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Over to Vicky. Uh, Vicky, you are muted. Vicky, you're muted. Vicky, uh, there you go. Gonna unmute. Okay, I say amen. Good afternoon. I too am going to begin with Isaiah 33, verse 22. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, and he will save us. Let's keep that in mind. Lord, we acknowledge you as our judge, our lawgiver, and our king, the landlord of all the earth, all tribes, all peoples, all tongues, and we agree that you are Lord of all. You declared, behold, I do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Rivers will flow in parched places. Light will shine in the darkness, and truth will reign in the land. Lord, you're doing something new and fresh in your land of California, and our eyes are upon you as you lead us out of the wilderness places of drought, discouragement, and oppression. You've gone ahead of us to show us the way that we might walk in it. We come to you, the fault line. We come to the fault line. We take our place standing in the gap to petition your court today on behalf of your people to bring your kingdom alignment and will into the earth realm as it is in heaven regarding California's seats of government. We confess that we have turned away from you and look to man to deliver us when it is you who will save us, Lord. Today, we turn our hearts towards you, seeking your wisdom, vision, and strategy for California leadership. Help us hear clearly and obey your counsel and wisdom as we choose new leadership. For you know the hearts of those who will stand up to seek a seat of government in this state. And so we call forth the one whom you have chosen from the beginning of time. We join with you in agreement and we say, let your rule come and your will be done in California's leadership governance as it is in heaven. We acknowledge it is you who sets up kings and rulers in the land and it is your will and purpose and timing when you remove them. In this transition of the old and into the new, we agree and we say yes to your rule and purpose for California. Lord, lead the people, not by my power nor political agenda, but lead us by your Holy Spirit out of the wilderness of sin, corruption, even our own complacency. For we looked the other way and we made excuses. I say, forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned and allowed voice of darkness to speak when we chose to be silent in the gates, hoping someone else would speak on our behalf. So as one body today in unity of heart and mind, we cry out and we say to those who dwell in the land of California, awaken, awaken and hear the call to stand up. Let your voice be heard, be bold, be strong, be courageous, don't draw back, engage. Let your vote be a voice of justice and righteousness to be heard in the land. The turning point has come. Arise and stand strong, stand for truth, stand for legacy and stand for righteousness to exalt our land. California, you've been summoned to arise to your destiny and calling to take your place in God's building model to see righteousness and justice turn the battle at the gate. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And this is Sue Landry and I've got um, local government. And it says in Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says in Micah 6, 80, has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Father, we pray for our mayors, our city council members, our county supervisors, all of our local officials and our uh, state assembly that we elect locally and send them to Sacramento. God, we lift up our local officials, those appointed and those elected. God, we lift them up and we ask the fear of the Lord 
that we would have men and women who walk in the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom and who walk with you and in, in humility and they, they are seeking justice and love mercy and walk humbly with, with their God in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. We agree. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just proclaim God that the government shall return back upon your shoulders here in California. Glory to God. And now we have the arts and entertainment mountain um, and Hollywood. We all know that how California goes because of our, the decisions that come out of our state capital and also hugely Hollywood that truly affect the nations. We are so, again, we're so blessed and honored to have every single one of you who are participating. Many of you, most of you are pastors and ministry leaders. And we're so grateful to the Lord for you, for your boldness and your active stand. And one of those huge influencers in Hollywood is a longtime friend of Craig, California partner, just a beloved brother, he and his wife, Lily, and he usually comes to our conferences, and that is a Dr. Ted Bear. We have, we're dropping titles, but you can go to his, you can just type in Ted Bear, and you can read all about him. Oh my goodness, he is just a mighty man of God who is seeking God's kingdom, and, and so we are so excited. So, um, Ted Bear, first of all, is going to be speaking, and then after Ted is, and he, Ted Bear is also the founder with his wife of Movie Guide. So if you ever wonder if you or your family should go to a particular movie, go to Movie Guide and check out the ratings. And then we have Wolfgang Kovacek, who y'all know, and we all love him and appreciate him. He's been part of our pre-California Board of Directors for so many years, and he also is with um, Resurrection Life Ministries. He's a teacher, also he teaches classes and just such a huge blessing to me and our whole Craig California team. And then followed with Karen Cavell. She is the director of the Hollywood Prayer Network, another mighty, mighty war, right there, boots on the ground in Hollywood. And then we have our precious brother, um, Gershom Sakala. He's going to be praying for media. Um, Gershom is the founder and director of Zambikes and just so many other ministries that he is a part of, a founder of, and we are so grateful for this next segment. So please take it away, precious Ted. Hi. <laughs> it's great to be with you today. You're blessing and you're blessed and uh, Tomorrow I have to go off and preach in Idaho, which is a little bit more free than California. But you know, let's let's just pray. Lord, we just uh, we love our children, we love our grandchildren, we love our friends, we love our family. We know the power of the mass media, and we know the power of the mass media of entertainment, movies, television, streaming. All of it has grown tremendously. Uh, since we've been doing the annual Faith and Values Awards Gala and report to the entertainment industry has gone from 40,000 hours for kids between one and 17 to 60,000, 64,000 hours. But we've seen, Lord, that there's some good news and we want to praise you first for the good news that in spite of all the bad news out there, the bad news is wrong, that you're in charge of our lives, you're in charge of our children and grandchildren. Even this year, COVID has been filled with miracles friends of mine who make great movies and uh and great sports movies great movies for disney and other big channels have come up to see us they've talked about their faith they talked about they're doing more movies than ever there's been some tremendous movies this year and we thank you lord that from our report we see that movies with uh, sex do very badly at the box office in fact they do about 1 20th of movies with no sex Movies with uh, nudity do very badly at the box office. Violence do less. And the New York Times was upset that family films do better at the box office last year. And I'm happy, except for you to wake up the New York Times so that they see that this is good news, not bad news, because our children need to see films that are uplifting. But we know there's a lot of bad out there. Lord, we ask you 
but we know that the problem is that the church left Hollywood. I thank you in the years that we've been speaking to you, the years that we've been prevailing, the years since you saved me in the middle of my life to come to Christ out of a Hollywood family. We thank you that you've caused so many wonderful Christians to get into Hollywood in many different ways, from making great movies like the Kendrick Brothers and the Irwin Brothers, to people at the top of the studios who are just wonderful people, people who make The Quiet Place and others. We know, Lord, that you're moving mightily because I see it every day. And I ask you, Lord, to just touch everyone's heart. You touch my heart. You've touched uh, people I know who are, who are socialists, communists, atheists, you know, pagans, all sorts of people who are being touched. And in spite of the fact that the news doesn't report on them, I ask you to touch their hearts, their minds, their souls, to move beyond and to keep going and touching more and more people. I thank you for all the people who spoke out against the politically correct cancel culture, people that you didn't expect, people that I knew from a long time ago, which you'd never expect. We thank you for the miracles that are going forth. Lord, we ask you to bind and gag every spirit in Hollywood that is not of you, to just silence it, to cast it out of people's hearts, minds, and souls, and spirits. We ask you to send the angels of heaven and the hounds of heaven after all the people with love and grace to open their hearts and minds to the truth that you can set them free and give them a more abundant life. I thank you for the abundance that you've given us. We thank you for this wonderful prayer team. We thank you for Mariel and Wolfgang putting these all together all the time. We thank you for the blessings you've showered, and we thank you that we can still have a national day of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Safe travels. God bless. Amen. Bye -bye. Thank you, Ted, so much. Uh, I'm reaching out and praying right now in the name of Jesus for all the people that are working in Hollywood, in the body of Christ. Uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, for all the people that are producing movies, that are producing um, um, books, that are producing TV shows, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are an amazing God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, Thank you so much for what you're doing in Hollywood as you're touching people, as you are moving their hearts to produce those things that are worthy in your sight, worthy in your sight, Lord. And so we thank you, Lord, for that. And we praise you and bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Karen Cavell, are you with us? Well, she actually did, um, she texted me twice this morning. And so she said that she would be with us and she was ready to go. So Sister Karen, if you're on, you could maybe unmute. Director of the Hollywood Prairie Network. All righty then. Well, let's just go right to Gershom. Sakala, please. Brother Gershom, are you with us? Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Okay, well, then we are ahead of schedule here. Glory to God. Um, Sister Regina is former ambassador Sam Brombeck on the call with us. And you're on mute. Regina, you're on mute. Uh, you yes, go. his assistant is working on it now. I think he missed a T and uh, y'all helped. So they're, they should be coming on shortly. They, they say they're getting it. Do you see him on? Um, uh, let's look. We have a whole lot of people on. And uh, Wolfgang, do you see him yet? Regina, pray him on. 
Come on, girl. Okay. You fiery prayer warrior, you pray him on. <laughs> Holy Father, we come into your presence right now, and we ask that you would make this work. We ask that you'd send holy angels, Father, angels that know about technology and can open that Zoom and get Ambassador Sam on with us today to talk about the miracles that he is doing, Lord, in the earth for you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I guess I'll just tell you why they're trying to come on uh, that I met Sam. Uh, actually, I knew Sam before I met him uh, because um, his dear friend, uh, Pastor Dick Simmons, was his intercessor. And, and Dick Simmons would tell me strategies for prayer for Sam uh, before I even met him. He was still a governor when he was loaning me his house in D.C. for a week during National Day of Prayer to bring prayer warriors in. So we've had a magnificent time praying for Sam uh, through the years that I've known him. Uh, and even on this call today, there are SEAL teams that were there at some of the pivotal moments when the Lord used Sam, even at the State Department, to launch an alliance of nations and all kinds of exciting um, things. Uh, so uh, is he there yet? Uh, I don't see him yet. All right. Why don't I give his assistant a call? That's great. And you can forward the same link that I sent to you and, and how you came on. I think I sent it to both of you or you sent it on to them. So all he has to I, do is just press the link. He I did send, to... I sent exactly that to him. Okay. Exactly. Well, thank you. <laughs> One second. I'm calling him right now. Okay. And Sister Regina Minor is part of the United States Prayer Council also. Matt, hello. I'm calling to see if you guys are able to hook up. <laughs> Just a couple minutes. I'm in Kansas. Oh, you're not there at the Museum of the Bible. No. Okay, does, no, does he have oh, Gina? Yeah. You might want to, um, you might want to mute. Okay, thank you. I could have muted her too. Okay, praise God. All right, you're fine, Regina. We can't hear you right now. So we just say thank you, Father, that you, you make all these divine connections, Lord. And we just bless, we bless you, Lord God. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, as we continue to lift you, lift you up to praise and to worship you. You are good, you are good, and your mercies endure forever and ever and ever. Amen. So we just want to see if, brother, um, if our precious the Vice President of the Navajo Nation, uh, Myron Lizer, is with us. Is he with us, Bob Wolf? Do you know? He might be on mute. Okie dokie then. And so, Regina, if you have any words, go ahead. And um, about Sam Brombeck, you can go ahead and unmute. There you are. Um, well, I will share that today um, is the culmination of 18 years of work. 18 years ago, uh, Chief uh, Jay Swallow and his wife, Joanne, and uh, Nigel Big Pond and Cindy Jacobs reached out to, um, uh, well, he, I think he was a legislator at the time, uh, either a senator or a um, congressman, and talked about this. And he has been working tirelessly uh, on this apology to uh, the First Nation people uh, since that time, even finally having the resolution passed, um, I think through a defense appropriation bill uh, in 2009. And so it's a, an incredible uh, thing. He's using this as a launching board, as a strategy uh, to ask the Lord um, to forgive this nation for the shedding of innocent blood. First, yeah. the innocent blood of the Native Americans. Uh, also, uh, it can later be used as a shedding of innocent blood with slavery uh, and then abortion and those trafficked and then any uh, occult activity shedding of innocent blood. He's calling it, um, he's asking us to christen a highway of healing uh, over this for our nation in all these areas and also the nations of the globe. Uh, okay, so it's a you know what? Praise God, that's amazing. So maybe, you know, we'll, we'll just wait. We're um, a little bit, and we will have our brother instead, Charles Huang. He will jump in right now and pray for the healing of the races and no more hatred or prejudice. And we will pray and continue to pray that um, Sam 
from back will join us soon. So give me a thumbs up, Regina, okay. when he's on. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Brother Charles. Uh, Brother Hi, Charles. thank you, Mariel, and everyone on this call. Uh, I happen to have a spiritual mom who's the Grand Chief of North America, Linda Prince. Anyway, I want to pray. Our, have, our Father in heaven, sanctify be your name. And for our Taiwanese and Chinese speaking audience that's online right now, as we are between your, the Passover and Shavuot Pentecost, the county of Omer, we count the blessings of God and offer thanksgiving to you for your love for our nation. We pray for healings, harmonies, and unity among all the races, Asian Americans, First Nations, African Americans, Caucasians, and Hispanics, in California and the United States. We thank you for the 2009 joint resolution drafted by Senator Sam Brownback, the government apology to the Native Americans. We pray that there will be official apology coming from the United States president in the future also. We ask that you heal the first people of the Turtle Island, the original name for America and all the races in the United States. Even as Acts 17, says from one man he made every nation living on the entire surface of the earth and he fixed the limits of their territories and the pairs when they would flourish. God did this so that people would look to him, look for him and perhaps reach out and find him, although in fact he's not far from each one of us. And John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world, we all know this verse, all races, people, groups, and tribes. Psalms 133 verse one says, oh, how good, how pleasant it is for brethren, brothers to dwell, to live together in unity. It is like the Jew Hermon that settles on the mountains of Zion, for it was there that Adonai ordained the blessing of everlasting life. We repent for our sins of prejudices, self-centeredness, jealousies, envy, pride, self-righteousness and strife in our state and ask you to release your forgiveness and love to wash away our sins and heal the broken hearts and lives that have been affected by the pandemic. We ask you to release hope in the hearts of those people who lost their hope. For Yeshua, Jesus, you are the only one who died and rose from the dead and qualified to give hope to all the people who look to you. Raise up your people throughout California to be shining light and salt in all severe influences Release healing power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of humility, reconciliation upon all races, and remove all hatred and prejudices on the hearts of all the people in California and America. John 7, verse 24, Yeshua said, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. First Samuel 16, 7. When God sent prophet Samuel to anoint a new king, he said, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, for the Lord does not look as men sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In Yeshua Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you so, so much. We agree. And I see that our precious Karen Cavell has joined us. So we are going to just, we're going to go back step a little bit because we get to do this. And so um, Karen, if you would, we already introduced you and um, we've already offered prayer for Hollywood, except we're inserting your prayer because that's, you know, that's what family, that's what we do. So thank you for joining us. And believe me, I understand how tough it is sometimes to get on these. So we are still waiting for former Ambassador Sam Brombach and also Vice President of the Navajo Nation, Myron Leiser is joining us um, and he's coming on. Brother Bob Wolf says, so go ahead, Karen, offer a prayer for Hollywood and the intercessors, what's on your heart? Jump right in and splash around in this river of prayer that's flowing throughout California. Huh? Oh, thank you, Marielle. Thank you for your patience. I wanna lead all of you to pray my heart for Hollywood. We need more prayers to join us. We can break through spiritual battle if we have a mighty team of, I call the mighty warrior attack sheep. So Lord, I thank you so much for Hollywood. I thank you that this is the world's most influential mission field. I thank you that you have called Christians here to be salt and light, to be examples of Christ-like living, to tell great stories of love and beauty and truth and redemption 
and salvation. Lord, I ask that you bring the Christians from around the world to add Hollywood to their prayer list for three reasons, Lord, to break that bondage but that, the, that the enemy has taken on Hollywood after the Christians left decades ago, to have us reclaim the land, to have us build community so that we can be a strong, visible force of loving, godly, talented, creative people. I pray that you will give a heart of evangelism to the Christians who are here to want to share their faith with the people who don't yet know you. Lord, I call them pre-Christians. And I believe that we can be a mighty force of loving people to Jesus by being excellent at what we do, by being open and vulnerable about our lives, and by drawing people into the fold, Lord. Would you do that mighty work? And would you change the hearts of Christians outside of Hollywood who think that this is an evil, bad place? This is no worse than any other place. This is not Sodom and Gomorrah. Hollywood is Nineveh. It is being redeemed. And we thank you in Jesus' name that you are bringing Christians together to be here, to pray for us, and to make an eternal difference. So Lord, do your mighty work. Break through the bondage that is stopping Christians from embracing this mission field. And would you encourage and build up and empower the Christians who are here to make an eternal difference with their stories and with their lives. Thank you, Jesus, that this group right here can change the world. And we stand firm. We pray for the actors to be able to make decisions about what roles to take, what roles not to take. We pray for the directors to know how to treat the whole team while they're directing with love and grace and creativity and joy. We pray for the producers to find money so that we can make projects that make a difference. But we need the funding, Lord. You can work on the hearts of Christians who want to use their money to tell stories that last forever. And Lord, we also pray that you will build a community of believers here that love each other and that others can come to you because they see how we love one another. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Christians together globally to pray, to love, and to minister in a place that impacts every people group across the globe. And I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, sister. We agree. And, and if any of you would like to be an intercessor for someone in Hollywood, please contact Karen Cavell. Karen, give people your website so they can do that. Absolutely. It's it's hollywoodprayernetwork.org, hollywoodprayernetwork.org. And just click on there. If you go to contacts, my name and email are there. I am happy to talk to anybody, to get people involved, to encourage people to be a part of our team. God is moving here, and I hope you'll join us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Okay, we just would like to check now and see if former Ambassador Sam Brom Brombach is with us. Yeah. Praise you, Lord. Well, I see the Vice President of the Navajo Nation, um, Myron Leiser. God bless you, our brother. We're so happy you are here with us. Um, praise God. So, Regina, what are you hearing? Anything? Uh, yes, um, the scheduler transposed it wrongly. They missed a letter. They went back, they found it. It was a missing T, and he is joining it, uh, as soon as they can get that to him. So that is uh, what I just heard. Okay. I'll call him. I'll call him right now. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, we, we are just excited and for what God is doing. And we praise you. Well, King, would you please change the name from Adam um, to Myron Leiser on screen? That would be wonderful. Um, I'll let you do that. <laughs> you praise God. Well, while we're waiting for Sam Brombeck um, to join us, and because of the, a wrong Zoom link, then we just say thank you, Father, that you are moving. You are moving through California, Lord. You are moving through our nation. And God, if one can set a thousand to flight and two can set 
10,000, Lord, look at all the enemies, God, that we are kicking out of our regions, out of our households, off of our land. God, you call us to bless and possess the land. And that's what we are doing right now, Lord God, praying unceasingly, day and night, night and day, as we praise you, as we bless you. We thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So um, we are we are waiting a couple more minutes. Um, Regina just dropped off again to connect with <laughs> former Ambassador Brown, Sam Brown back. And, you know, that's okay because we're all in God's timing. So what do we do when we have a little gap, right? We pray, we worship, glory to God, and we surround him with our praises. So we are going to ask one of our worship leaders, whether it's Chris Leeper Sophia or Valerie House or Trisha, if you would jump in and offer a worship song until, until we get a thumbs up from Regina that Sam Brownback is with us. Praise you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you. Okay. Trisha. Okay. We love you, Yeshua. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips and we praise you yeshua and you will be praised and you will be praised with angels we sing that you will be praised. You father the orphan, you love us so, and you hold our weakness, and our strength is not our own. Oh, we love you, Jesus. You are worthy of all our praise. And over this state, we say the name Yeshua. Oh, and your praise will ever be on our lips, ever be on our lips. Your praise will ever be on our lips, ever be on our lips, your praise will ever be on our lips, ever be on our lips, your praise will ever be on our lips, Yeshua, and you will be praised over California, and you will be praised with angels and saints, we cry worthy are you, Lord, and you will be praised, and you will be praised, and you will be praised, oh, we praise your holy name, Jesus, oh, we praise your name oh we love you there's no other name but the name of jesus there's no other name with anointing and power there's no other name 
that causes the demon to tremble. Oh, there's no other name but the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about the name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms, oh, they'll all pass away. But there's something about the pure name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Let's all lift up the name of Jesus for a moment, wherever you are, whatever language you want to lift up, Yeshua, as his parents called him. Hallelujah. Let's all lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Yeshua. We lift you up. We lift you up, Lord God. No greater name than Jesus. No greater name than Yeshua. Lord, we love you. King of kings, the Lord of the Lord, he plays you. He bless you. He worship you. El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Rama. Oh God, you are our everything. You are all in all. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. praise you. We just bless you, Lord God, over California. Hallelujah. Be glorified, oh, be glorified, be glorified. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord, to come in. We throw wide open the doors of our hearts, God. And we welcome you. We welcome you to increase, oh God, that we would decrease. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. Amen and amen. Lord God. Ha, thank you so much, Trisha, one of our board of directors and worship leader so um regina do you have any updates um are are you on sam brombach uh yes i just got a uh, message from matt uh and he is about to get back to me yet again literally um uh, in this minute i just got a message from matt i'm sorry about this uh, but we'll we'll find out what has happened i know that he changed a special filming to be able to step away and be on this call when i shared that um uh, first nations people were going to be on the call he was very excited and changed the filming of this very special day i, I don't know if you know what happened this morning but um uh, the joint resolution was read at the congressional cemetery right. Um, so uh, yeah, um, a beautiful, did y'all see that? Uh, it was uh, lovely and Nigel Big Pond was there. I should say Nigel Big Pond was there, but, um, awesome. so yeah, I hope to well, hear something. You know what? We are going to honor time and we want to honor yes. our beloved brother that, um, our B Bob Wolf, Robert Wolf connected us to a friend of Bob Wolf's, um, vice president of the Navajo Nation, Myron, God bless you, Myron. We, we're so happy you could join us. And we understand you are also a pastor and a worship leader. Glory to God. And um, so Bob Wolf speaks absolutely so, so highly of you. We welcome you to the call. We would love to hear your heart, um, your heart for for America, for California, for what God is doing amongst the First Nations and amongst our Native American friends. So whatever is on your heart to share, please feel free. Thank you again so much. We are blessed to have you join us. 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, Yate, as we would say from the Navajo Nation, the largest Indian nation in the North American continent, uh, we do certainly count this as a high honor. Again, uh, chiming in with the California National Day of Prayer. We just got done with the New Mexico Day of Prayer on the steps of the Capitol. Uh, what a powerful time. We had uh, prayers for many uh, covering government, covering education, covering health, covering uh, so many segments. But one of them was uh, really central to my heart as uh, a brother, dear brother in Christ, had, uh, representing the state of New Mexico, had uh, uh, sought their uh, forgiveness uh, for all the atrocities and all the hardships that was given to Indian uh, country over the years. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, I tried to steer the conversation. I, number one, we accepted the apology and that we did grant forgiveness. Uh, but number one, I think we wanted to honor the Lord and the spirit of the Lord in this day um, because our creator God set Indian nations, First Nations people on this North American continent uh, in the beginning. And he had a, his original intent. And so we prayerfully consider what was our God, creator God's original intent for First Nations here on the North American continent, uh, at a place called we, that's known as Turtle Island. Uh, now again, we have so much history, it's good and bad, but in the name of Christianity, a lot of uh, the original intent of God uh, was usurped was stolen, uh, wrong motives, right? Uh, the land grab, all those things and greed and power, right? So what was God's original intent? So that's what's on my heart today as we uh, reach in and, and to California. We appreciate our brothers and sisters in California right now. Appreciate Bob and his friendship over the years. Uh, we were in Jerusalem, walking the streets of Jerusalem. And uh, it was there that early on, I had saw the need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So uh, to my uh, Hebrew friends, uh, my Jewish friends out abroad, we do pray for you all, uh, First Nations. We're tying and, and I believe joining our heart of hearts, our spirits, that, that God would, uh, would, uh, would restore his, uh, his peace, would restore his shalom peace to uh, all of those uh, nations that have been you know, ostracized, that have been persecuted over the years. So uh, again, that's what is on our mind right now as we, um, I guess, prepare to re receive that joint proclamation from uh, Sam Brownback and uh, reaching uh, out, and re reconciling First Nations and, uh, you know, all of those ethnicities that are out there. I learned early on, too, that when you only reach out to uh, or deal with one people group, that you only have a part of the heart of God, as you know, his, through his manifold wisdom, that we need to uh, be open to uh, what God has for us through other ethnicities, through other people groups. And certainly we have so much that we could be blessed with. And we also know, too, that we have to open up our hearts to the spirit of the Lord. Earlier today, I read uh, from uh, Proverbs 19.11 that it is to a man's glory to forgive an offense. And certainly in this day and age, we have many people that are running around offended, you know, so many things, the political, geopolitical, so many ethnicities. Again, we, uh, you know, again, without the spirit of the Lord, which, where true reconciliation takes place uh, with an open heart, we can arrive at those moments. Remember our God, he's, he's such a good God. He's a faithful God, but he'll share his glory with no one, right? So in this day and age, though, we can certainly access some of those uh, uh, real powerful points of him and that we, there's again in the Proverbs 19.11, this is to a man's glory. The only time that a man can receive glory to forgive an offense. Again, we, uh, I lay that out there for you all and certainly for First Nations to forgive an offense is uh, I believe powerful. So as if we can go forward, just forgiving all that's happened behind us Looking forward, looking forward to that great and wonderful day of the Lord, which is coming real soon, and that we'll be able to meet all those when that when the, the Lord comes back in the eastern sky, when those the dead in Christ, they will rise first, and we all that are still alive when uh, Jesus Christ returns, meet them in the air. And uh, what a powerful time that's going to be. So that's what's on my heart today. And I just wanted to share all that. And uh, we appreciate uh, First Nations uh, uh, prayers. We appreciate First Nations re people reaching out to First Nations. Again, 
what was God's original intent when he set First Nations here on the North American continent? You and I, we're answering those as we live and go forward here in the real near future. So thank you. Amen. Amen. We just love and appreciate you and our First Nations, our Native American friends and brethren who are part of Cray, California, part of many ministries represented here throughout the state. And we do honor the protocol and, and we've learned much, much through the protocol that you all have taught us. And we're so very, very grateful. But I'm going to ask right now, a precious sister, Valerie House, she doesn't know this. I, um, you know, we're used to being put on the spot sometimes, but ready in season, out of season. But, but Valerie House, her cousin is one of our precious friends, John David Gomez, and he is a chief of, of the nation, well, of, um, and he also has the Jerusalem House of Prayer in Oregon. So uh, we love Valerie to pray a blessing over you. Um, just would you say a blessing, please, Valerie, over Vice President Myron Lizer as he it works with the Navajo Nation and has a huge mantle, a huge anointing upon his shoulders. Valerie's a worship leader. Um, VP Elijah, you are a worship leader and a pastor, and we're so grateful, Valerie and her husband, Terry, a pastor, and we're just so grateful to what you do and how you represent the Lord so beautifully, his heart, you represent his heart so beautifully, so we just say thank you, so go ahead, please, Valerie. Amen, thank you, Maria, we bless you, Brother Myron Lizer. Can I sing the ironic benediction over you in Hebrew and in English? Thank you. Yevorach Adonai V'yishmerecha Yahar Adonai P'nabilecha V'yuneka Yisa Adonai shine upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace and give you peace. They are same, l'cha shalom. They are same, l'cha shalom. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Sar Shalom, in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Love you. Bless you. Amen. Very powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, my great great grandmother, her family was a, a, a Navajo and her whole tribe was decimated. So she alone was spared and she ran to the Cherokees who adopted her. Hallelujah. So I bless you in New Mexico. I admire you. Thank you. Man. Man. Wow. 
Wow. Amen. I want to thank you, Valerie House. That was so beautiful. I received it. Baruch Hata Adonai. We appreciate it. Baruch Hata Adonai. Blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe. Woo -hoo! <laughs> Amen. We love that. <laughs> Valerie also speaks Hebrew too. So glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Shalom. Shalom, Chavarim. I know a heim <laughs> to life. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, Amen. how fun. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. I know that you have many things going on, Vice President Leiser, with the Navajo Nation today, too. And um, Bob is on, a, Bob Wolf is on a conference call, uh, apparently, too. So we just say thank you. We bless you. Now we're going to, <laughs> big hugs. Um, now we're going to transition over right now to law enforcement firefighters, military, and first responders, and chaplains, and the perfect person who popped up in my mind immediately to ask to pray for all that is someone that I sat under me um, and from the Sacramento Law Enforcement Chaplaincy when I became certified, and I'm just so grateful to Mindy Russell. She's out of Sacramento, but the whole region in Sacramento, different counties, and so many chaplains that you raise up and teach and equip. And Mindy, remember we had a police. Well, that was your that was years ago, but there was a policeman <laughs> in our class, that class, and boy, I got the inside Hello. scoop about things that happened. Of course. Oh, wait a second. I'm so sorry. Regina's back. I'm so sorry to do this to you. Sam has had a hard time to come on, but he, he's here on the phone and he would like to be part of it. Can we fit him in now? Um, well, you know, I think uh, Vice President Miser just dropped off the call after we prayed and blessed him no, and he's everything. he's still on, he's oh. still on. Myron is still on. Okay. Oh, Myron, okay, good. Okay, so... Uh, Mindy, if that's okay with you, we're going to take, we've been doing this. We're just kind of like be led by Holy Spirit. <laughs> we, gave Holy, we gave Holy Spirit permission. And so, so we are just, um, Mindy, is it okay with you? Your time schedule? Okay. All right. Love that flag behind you. We stand with the blue. Um, oh. Okay. So yes, go ahead. Regina, if you would introduce, and as I said, Regina Minor is part the prayer council of the united states that um, i'm also a part of and many of you we've already mentioned you you're also a part of it and we're so grateful um to you for all you do there in washington dc regina to unite to unite prayer ministries and and everything so go ahead if you would please introduce sam Brombeck. thank you so much I do not remember when I first met Sam in the natural. Um, I had been praying for him because of Dick Simmons' strategies and information about him for many years, but I do want to share with you briefly and not take much time. Okay. When the Holy Spirit introduced me to Sam Brownback, I was in a large ballroom in Washington, D.C. Uh, it, it was a banquet and I was at a lead table and I looked across a parquet dance floor and there was another lead table across the way, but it was filled with uh, congressional dignitaries and um, governmental people. And uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, table and the lights all around them with stars and stripes. And the Lord let me know um, that that was a, a Daniel chapter 12 table that those that lead many to righteousness will shine brightly like the stars forever and i got a real sense that the work they were doing for international religious freedom and to free people and the reconciliation work that they were doing is kingdom work of eternal significance that paves the way for a holy spirit move of god in the earth so it is a joy for me to introduce sam brown back now sam this is um the california national day of prayer 
Well, it's a pleasure to join you. Uh, thanks, Virginia, and uh, welcome everybody to California on the National Day of Prayer. I'm delighted that you're gathered to uh, pray, uh, pray for the nation, pray for healing, uh, pray for us to uh, move forward as a country. Uh, one of the things that uh, Nigel Big Pond and I uh, presented at the National Day of Prayer this morning was the Native American, the apology that was done from the U.S. government in 2009 to the Native American people, but it was never uh, put forward by the president. It was signed into the law by the president, by President Obama, but there was never an official ceremony uh, where uh, Native leaders were asked to come in and the president would officially put the apology forward and, and acknowledge uh, the bad policies, the things that we had done in the past, uh, the broken treaties uh, that uh, had happened to the Native people of this country. So it sat in a drawer. Um, and what we are doing now is we're really they're putting light on that issue. Uh, they're putting light on the need for us for repentance uh, to uh, acknowledge uh, the broken treaties and to acknowledge the spilt innocent blood that we did of Native Americans uh, in our past. It's, uh, it's the root sin that defiles the land, is the spilling of innocent blood. And we did it, and we need to acknowledge it. We're not the first nation to do this. Canada has done this. New Zealand has dealt with these issues. But what happens uh, when you do acknowledge this, apologize for it, it's like lancing a boil. It doesn't finish the process, but it starts the healing, and the healing can happen. And until you lance the boil, you can't begin the healing. So that's what I'm uh, praying for. That's what I'm hoping is being lifted up across this country is healing by governors. While I was governor of Kansas, I uh, apologized to the Native tribes in Kansas, uh, the Native people in Kansas, uh, gave them a gift, and um, and sought to move forward to heal the land. Uh, and it will heal the land. It helped heal our land in Kansas. We've got to do this as a nation uh, now to heal the land. The president has to acknowledge really the, the wrongs uh, and ask for forgiveness for the land to be healed, the land that we share with Native Americans. And that's what we're asking to have happen and to move forward this day. And I really feel this is an important day in the process of healing of this nation. And Lord knows we need healing. How many times have we prayed, Father, uh, he'll hear us from heaven. Second Chronicles passage that hear us from heaven and heal our land. Well, we've got to acknowledge and deal with our issues for him to heal our land. And uh, this is, a, I think, really a key moment for us to move forward in healing, uh, healing the land. So I don't know if you've read the apology uh, there in California. It's fairly short, uh, and uh, but it's important for us to put it forward to heal the land. Regina? They've not read it, Sam. Do you happen to have okay. it there? I have it right here, and if you're okay, I'll read it now then. Wonderful. Here's the apology to Native peoples of the United States. It's in Section 8113 of the Defense Appropriations Act of 2009. The United States, acting through Congress, recognizes the special legal and political relationship Indian tribes have with the United States and the solemn covenant with the land we share. It commends and honors Native peoples for the thousands of years that they have stewarded and protected this land recognizes that there have been years of, fish, of official depredations, ill-conceived policies, and the breaking of covenants by the federal government regarding Indian tribes. Apologizes on behalf of the people of the United States to all Native peoples for the many instances of violence, maltreatment, and neglect inflicted on Native peoples by citizens of the United States expresses its regret for the ramifications of former wrongs and its commitment to build on the positive relationships of the past and present to move towards a brighter future where all the people of this land live reconciled as brothers and sisters and harmoniously steward and protect this land together. 
urges the president to acknowledge the wrongs of the United States against Indian tribes in the history of the United States in order to bring healing to this land and commends the state governments that have begun reconciliation efforts with recognized Indian tribes located in their boundaries and encourages all state governments similarly to work towards reconciling relationships with Indian tribes within their boundaries. Nothing in this section authorizes or supports any claim against the United States or serves as a settlement of any claim against the United States. Mm. Let it be, Lord. Let it be. Let it be. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all in California and Regina. I am uh, uh, deeply appreciative of you carrying this on forward, and I, I pray for a new day of, day of healing for this land, for the Native people, and for all of us, for healing of this land of America. Thank you so much. And, and that, and Ambassador Sam, they have a Navajo leader that would like to pray a blessing on you before you go. Oh, please. Yes. He would love that. Ready. Yate, Senator Brownback, this is Vice President Myron Leiser. Uh, it is good. Thank you for that. And uh, we appreciate your leadership and stewardship on the Senate Joint Resolution 14. It is great. We do accept. Um, we do want to um, expedi expedite this uh, um, reconciliation between uh, the leaders, you know, in the past and up to now. We accept the apologies and we want God who, who is a god of order, right? We want him to restore the land. And you're right about the innocent blood that was shed. We, even as First Nations, have shed innocent blood, too, on our fellow uh, uh, First Nations people, all the many tribes. But once that is attained, I believe that God is going to restore the uh, First Nations, is going to restore North America, the United States, because he honors those covenants and he's a good God. And uh, I appreciate your leadership on that. And so I want to pray a blessing on you. First Nations, right? What was God's original intent when he set First Nations here on North American soil before all of the, the, the uh, westward expansion and all of that? He had a plan. So what was that original intent? And so I believe we can access that, his vision that he had for First Nations, but it'll all only happen when we're all reconciled back together in one mind, one accord. He, he's going to bring the, the Jews, he's going to provoke the Jews to jealousy, right, by, by using the Gentile, and it's going to create the one new man, and he's, it's going to be a glorious time. And so I want to pray a blessing upon you, sir. Thank you for your leadership. Yeah, the end, God. We thank you, Lord, that you order our steps, Lord, and that you had a plan for First Nations when you set us here on this continent, Lord, a place known as Turtle Island. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you all the honor and glory that's due your name. I want to pray a blessing upon Mr. Brownback, Lord Father, for his leadership and his vision, Lord Father, to reconcile the different uh, people groups, Lord Father. And it all starts with just an initiative, an initiative based on your love for your people, Lord. So I thank you again for his leadership. I pray a blessings upon him, protect him in his coming and in his going, Lord. And I pray his message gets out there, Lord, and that many would hear it and receive it. We pray that the hearts are being prepared even right now, Lord, to receive this and to accept it and to be convicted, Lord, that there does need to be further outreach, Lord, to First Nations, to uh, African Americans, to Hispanics, to the Jewish people, and on and on, Lord Father. There's so many uh, racial divides that need to be lifted up to you and healed, for you are the God of the manifold wisdom, Lord. You created every tribe and every tongue, Lord, and one day we're all going to uh, bow and every knee shall bow and every knee confess that Jesus is Lord. And so we appreciate your leadership again. And so God bless him. Again, may the spirit of our Lord arise and his enemies be scattered in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, we have one a very short comment here from a sister that just heard something from the Lord. Sister Rovena, please share this for Sam Brownback, please. Hey, hi, Sam. While you were speaking, um, I just felt the Lord, I just kept hearing the same sentence over and over again. And it was gentle man of God, gentle man of God. 
And I just kept hearing it over and over again. And I felt like the Lord wanted to encourage you today mm -hmm. to keep going that sometimes you're in the trenches and you can wonder what, what am I doing? Am I here for God? And I just kept hearing gentle man of God, keep mm -hmm. going. And I felt like he just wanted you to be honored and seen today. And I don't know you, so I have no idea if that speaks to you, but I want to be obedient. And if you hear from God, you want to pass it on because it might just be the day you need to hear it. Thank you very much, Rowena. It's yes. very kind of you to share that word and I, I deeply appreciate it. I, I, and it. And it does encourage me. Thank you very much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank you know you what? I yourself. see you as a gentle, gentle man of God, but also you are a watchman warrior dressed <laughs> in the full armor of God, wielding the sword of the Lord with the authority that he has placed upon your hands. And we just bless you. We bless you. We bless you. California stands with you. We lift up your arms and we cheer you on into the good and the great plans that the Lord God Almighty has for you. Thank you so much for joining the Zoom call today. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you so much. Okay, now we are going to go ahead <laughs> and we're kind of like on this wonderful, not a roller coaster ride, but our hands are lifted up. You know how you ride a roller coaster? Our hands are lifted up in praise and surrender. In fervent prayer, Lord God, you are hearing our cries. Oh, Father, you're seated on the throne with Yeshua seated on your right hand, and you are hearing, and I believe you are moving on the prayers and scriptural declarations of your people, God. Oh, we love you, and we love to fill the atmosphere with praise and worship and declarations, God, dispelling the darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So now, Mindy, a <laughs> chaplain, Mindy Russell, Sacramento Law Enforcement Chaplaincy. Sister, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I, I so enjoyed being interrupted by great, great prayer. It was timely. Thank you. I'm honored to lead you in a prayer for our first responders. And I believe we that are prayer warriors, like the vast majority of our population appreciates it and honors those that are trained in any kind of crisis situation whether it be protection or medical or rescue. But we also have to understand that they are called by God. So they are authorities representing God. And as the pendulum swings against and away from God, we're seeing the attacks on his people. So as chaplains, pray for them as the ministers to the ministers of justice and the ministers of mercy and the ministers that go and heal. So I'll lead you in some strategic prayers because that's what officers talk like. <laughs> we are so blessed to have men and women who work diligently for our safety and well-being, even when their jobs are difficult and often thankless. Help us remember to thank you, Lord, for their sacrifices and service to our community. And may we touch heaven with prayers of gratitude whenever we see or personally encounter first responders. You give them the strength that you provide so that they serve and you will be honored. But Father, we pray for these first responders everywhere who have yet not made you their Lord and Savior. They may be called and appointed to do this, but they not need Jesus to be anointed. Please put your people in their paths so they might learn to seek your first and honor you. It is so important to have godly men and women in these positions of influence for the sake of your kingdom. We also pray that you will intervene in the lives of those who want to do well, but maybe have fallen away due to the pressures of this job. Reignite their hearts with passion for all that you Lord Jesus. To pray fervently with our first responders 
that will be salt and light in dark places and beacons of hope to the hopeless and help them minister in a very difficult occupation so that they may be changed agents for the sake of your name. And gracious God, these first responders, we know they have dangerous job. They are in harm's way. Help them to dwell in your shadow. May you always be their refuge in difficult situations. May they trust you completely, moment by moment. Show them your power when they find themselves in unsafe situations or when they face people who threaten to harm them. Keep them safe for your glory, Lord. And Lord, in this difficult and complicated decisions that they must make in a split second, give them wisdom, discernment, clarity. Give them an opportunity to stay calm and collected in the most tense moments and help them call out to you. And when their shifts take them away from their home, bless their families, Lord. Help their families be also courageous and strong. We ask that you would watch over each and every one of them, Father. May their, they place their hope in your Father, please keep our first responders emotionally strong, but spiritually tender when they are confronted by evil and brokenness. Give them your peace as they deal with pain and sufferings of others. May they have compassion for those whose lives are broken, and may they demonstrate kindness to they, those that hate them. Help them recognize that when others express that hate and anger and rage toward them, that they can find security in you. And Lord, as the community comes together, Help us be a light to their darkness. Help us be their armor bearers. Help us be able to show our first responders how much they are appreciated. May these brave men and women know that their God and their community supports them and cares for them and gives them way to demonstrate our gratitude and thankfulness for their difficult sacrifices every day. Help us be aware that they are all around us. We give you all the praise and everything that you give us and provide for us. And we thank you that you protect your men and women called to do your job, to do the job in authority representing you. And we praise you in your precious name, Holy Jesus. Amen. 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 And we thank you all that when you hear those sirens go off, that you just immediately pray, just stop what you're doing. And, and just just offer a prayer for the protection and wisdom and discernment, Lord God, as the officers, as firefighters, as, as first responders are on their way, that you do give them that wisdom and discernment and understanding right when they get on, they will know how to react and respond. And we thank you that you send ministering angels, Lord God, to the scene, to the situation. We thank you. We bless you. We bless Mindy Russell also, Lord God, as she represents hundreds and hundreds and and has to deal with so many suicides and situations lord god and just heartbreaking for the families we just say thank you father keep her strengthened keep her blessed and we thank you that she is filled with your joy your joy for the joy of the lord is our strength and it truly is mindy's strength so we say more joy lord more joy more joy in and through us lord god that we can reflect to other people god why we are not being tossed to and fro in the waves but we are like that tree planted by the river deeply rooted in your heart and in your word amen and amen amen love you mindy Mwah. thank you for all you do thank you for all you do mindy russell <laughs> and your husband frank too and so glory to god so now we are moving on. We are behind, as y'all know, but praise the Lord. Um, Mick McCoy has the two to three hour on the prayer force, and he told us we can take this time, but we've had a few different situations. No surprise to the Lord. So right now we have our precious beloved sister, Kate Hartman, Dr. Kate Hartman, and we are now in the education, education system right now. So we are going to be praying. Kate is going to be praying for godly administrators, for teachers, and for the parents' involvement. So, so very, very important. We know that. And Kate is with her church family there and other leaders there. And they are broadcasting this on their big TV screen. 
And we just say thank you, Kate, for all you do. You're part of Pray California team. We love you when you join our calls and you pray. And she is um, with Freedom Worship and Education Center, where she and her husband, Greg, are pastors. And she also is, I don't know if you're the principal or what your title is, but Freedom Uni Freedom Christian University. And so we just say thank you, Father, for that. Praise you, Lord God. We just love you and we bless you. And then we have Marilyn Jackson. Are you on? Are you on right now? Are you with us, Marilyn Jackson? She has prayed yes, for six. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay, wonderful. There you are. Hi. Yes. We're introducing people ahead of time so that once one of you finishes, you just jump right into this this river of praise and prayer and declarations flowing across California. Hallelujah. And so we just say thank you, Father, for Marilyn Jackson. And just she's been an intercessor, oh my gosh, for decades and decades. So faithful, so faithful, Lord God. She will be praying for the students, protection and courage, and for the school curriculum transparency. She has a ministry that she's the president and founder of, Kingdom Builders, and also Pray for Safe Schools. And Marilyn, during your time, you can give everyone, please, would you give them the website to go to that? And then Mick McCoy, he is going to be singing, releasing 2 Chronicles 714 song. And then Tricia Phillips is going to be praying for the homeless, the needy, the sick, the addicted, the abused, the lonely, which we have way too many of in California. One is too many. So praise you, Lord. So go ahead, please, Sister Kate. Thank you. All right. Well, we're a little bit behind schedule, so just jump right on into prayer. Thank you, Lord God. On this National Day of Prayer, we decree your life and your love and your liberty over our school systems. God, in California and in the United States of America, at every level, from the pre-kindergarten all the way up to the highest levels of higher education. We say that Jesus, you are Lord, that you deserve the glory and that you are raising up godly administrators, that you are causing Christian men and women of God to step into positions of influence and authority. And they are filled with boldness to share your love, to share your word, to share your gospel truth. We say the gospel of Christ is the power of God and his salvation for everyone who would believe. We know that our school systems originally were set up that children and your people would know how to read, that they could read the Bible, that they could approve those things which are excellent, that they could approve those things which would cause the United States of America to continue forth as a godly nation, one nation under God. And we call the school systems in California and in our nation back to that reality. We say in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ that our schools will again uphold the Holy Bible will again uphold that God, you are Lord and we are not. That secular humanism is an idol and has no place in our society set apart unto righteousness. We are a city set on a hill and our light will not be dimmed. It will not Amen. go out. It will shine brighter and brighter Amen. until it reaches the full light of the noonday sun in Jesus' name. So let it be restored, O oh God, for the glory of your name. Amen. 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 Woo. Glory to God. Mindy, I'm sorry, Marilyn. Marilyn Jackson, where did you go? <laughs> Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Well, her name's on the screen, so uh, come back, Marilyn. There you are. Go ahead. Jump in, please, and pray. Sorry about that. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity to pray. Today, I'm also representing uh, Education Impact 2021. And uh, I'm the coalition liaison for that. And education is on our hearts. So God, we, just, we do uh, come before you and we pray for the protection of all students from grades K through 12, including college. And we pray for protection against violence and bullying. 
and protection from COVID. We also pray for um, protection against the age inappropriate gender confusing ed, uh, sex ed curriculum and revisionist history, critical race theory, as well as ethnic studies. We pray against climate hysteria that would indoctrinate our kids away from God and their parents' values. God, we thank you for awakening the parents, the movement of raising up the parents across our state and our nation. Lord, we ask you to continue to, to wake them up. And Lord, we pray that the parents would be informed about what is being taught in the classrooms and that they would know their rights and how to protect their kids if they stay in public school and options if they should decide to leave. Lord, we also pray um, that we all work together to demand curriculum transparency, parental rights, and school choice that empowers parents to train up their kids in the way that they should go. Lord God, you have given children to parents, not to the Department of Education, to the Radical Teachers Union or Planned Parenthood and those with a progressive agenda. Lord, empower parents to reverse the indoctrination that's being fed to their kids. 85% of Christians have their kids in public school and education is the business of the church. Raise up a movement to take back education, um, the education of our children community by community, school district by school district yes. across our state. And we also pray that God's ecclesia will stand up and protect all kids, including our own. Yes. Lord, and Lord, we pray for your wisdom, courage, and strength to return our education system back to honoring your biblical principles with scientific and historical truth. And we also pray for our, as today, as we come together and we pray for our nation, we recall that Abraham Lincoln, his words that said, the philosophy of what's taught in the classroom in one generation will be the political ide ideology in the next. Children are not only our legacy and our inheritance, mm. but the future of our nation. Yes. Lord, we also pray for a mighty revival on the elementary through college campuses. We pray that your name would be lifted up and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you can uh, find out more about this whole movement of restoring education in California at educationimpact.us. Educationimpact.us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness too. Glory to God. Thank Praise you, Lord. Brother Mick, go yeah. ahead. Praise you, Lord. I wrote this song about almost 50 years ago. And um, we my can't wife hear you very we can't teacher. hear you too well. Can you hear me now? Better, thank you. Okay, I'll get closer. Um, hey, yeah, I wrote God. this about 50 years ago, 1975. If my people, if my people who are called by my name, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now we can personalize it. We are your people. We are your people. Call by your name, we are called by your name. We humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. Oh Lord, hear from heaven and Forgive our sin and heal our 
our land. Father, we just ask that you would do that, that you would turn our hearts back to you. We pray for the world so often that God, if the church doesn't turn mm -hmm. uh, to you, then we are sunk. Uh, without mm -hmm. you, Lord, we can do nothing. And uh, in our own strength, it's nothing but just uh, anger and resistance and fighting. And we pray that, Lord, you would rise us up into the heavens and help us to really truly be humble and meek and, and learn from you, Lord, um, because without you, Lord, we can do nothing in Jesus' name. Man, man, man. Amen. Man. Trisha, you're muted. You're muted. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and I'm praying for the homeless, the needy, the sick, the addicted, the abused, and the lonely. And Father, Anywhere we go in California, even just to run errands, we see people that are homeless, we see people that are oppressed, depressed, um, that are in need. And Father, what comes to my spirit is we have um, veterans that are homeless, we have so many that have lost jobs in this past year and small businesses, and there's been, during this um, pandemic there's been abuse at home between parents and children and spouses and father there is such a great need and so I speak your word over those that are hurting those that are sick those that are broken those that need covering over their head in Isaiah 43 2 when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they will not overflow you when you walk through the fire you will not be scorched nor will the flame burn you. And I seek Matthew 28, 20, and teach them to follow faithfully all that I've commanded you. And never forget, I am with you every day, even to the completion of this age. And I've talked to many homeless people and a lot of them know Jesus and they're stuck in these different addictions and things, strongholds that they know Jesus. So I thank you, Father, for hope rising up that those that feel hopeless, those that have needs that they will trust in you, that um, you are their healer, Father, from every addiction, from every abuse in their mind, in their body, in their spirit, in their emotions. And I speak Psalms 103, that we bless Adonai, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Adonai, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He <clears throat> forgives all your iniquity and he heals all your diseases. So thank you, Jehovah Rapha, for your healing virtue pouring upon those in California and our nation that need healing, that need victory, that need set free. We declare freedom for the captives. And thank you, Father, for stirring up within your children that whenever we leave our doors, there's an opportunity to be your light, to be your love, to bring hope, to bring healing, to bring salvation to those around us because it's so rampant anywhere, big cities, small cities. So we just thank you, Father, for using the body of Christ to bring healing and provision and unity and hope to those that are lost and broken and abused and homeless, Father, that you have a plan for them. We call forth those good plans that you have for them, plans that are not evil, but plans that will prosper them and give them a hope and a future. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And Lord, we just want to give a salvation call right now, an invitation. Lord, there is no greater thing, Lord, in our lives, those who have placed our lives in your hands than to be your children, God. We are your sons and your daughters. Lord, the word says that oftentimes the world does not understand us. But Lord, it didn't understand you either, Jesus. So many didn't understand you, Yeshua, as you walked this earth. Lord, we love you. We're so grateful for the hope, for the life, love, and liberty that we have in you. And Lord, we want everyone to know you, to love you, to bend their knee and confess you as their Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and their King. God, time is so short. 
Lord, we are only here on this earth for a mist in time, the Bible says. And that is the truth, Lord. Time is just flying by. We see so many changes all around us, God. Lord, I pray that you would help your people here who are called by your name in California to put you first, God. To make you, Jesus, the center. You, Jesus, be the center of our lives, God. Prioritizing with you, number one. Lord, your word says, God, in Romans 10, verses 9 to 11, that if you, and I'm inviting you to do this right now, if you have it, if you want to have the peace that we have, the joy of the Lord that we have, the trust and hope that we have in our Savior, knowing that he is with us, he never forsakes us. His spirit dwells within us because we have invited him in. We just say thank you, Father, for that. So Romans 10, beginning verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that the Father raised him from the dead on the third day, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And we are talking eternity here. Some of us have lost some really, really precious friends recently, and we really miss them. They were part of our pre California team, they were part of our lives. And we miss them. We miss not being able to text them. We miss not being able to call them. We miss not having them join our praise and prayer calls. We miss their portion that they would bring. But we rejoice that we know as God's sons and daughters that one day we will be able to hug them once again in heaven and spend eternity with them. Some of us have lost our parents, other relatives, and I rejoice that I get to see my parents and, and other people who I've loved who have gone before once again, because I have confessed with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my savior, my redeemer and Lord, and you can do the same thing right now. If you haven't done it yet, I just invite you to say these words. Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, from heaven to earth to show us the way, the truth, and the life. And that he walked this earth doing many, many miracles, many signs and wonders that you say that Jesus said, as your children, greater things that we will do. And Lord, we want to see those greater things happening in California. And we rejoice that they are in some places. The Lord, we want every single person equipped and ready to do those greater things. But only if they make you king and Lord of their hearts. And so, Father God, we invite you in to be savior. We thank you for your precious blood. Every single drop, Jesus, of your precious, priceless drop of blood that covers our sins. When we come and we ask you to forgive us, forgive us, forgive me for my sins. Oh God, search me, Holy Spirit, and see if there's anything wicked in my heart that you want removed and fill us all up with more than nine fruit of the spirit flowing through us. Oh God, Jesus, you are Savior. You are my King, my Redeemer. Baptize each one, Lord God, who is praying a prayer, inviting Jesus Christ in right now, asking forgiveness for their sins. And you say, Lord God, when we ask forgiveness, that you wash us clean through the precious blood of Jesus, that you deliver us from iniquity, 
that you heal us through the blood of the lamb. We're so grateful, Lord, to be your children and to be in this beautiful God family with you at the head. Now, Lord, for everyone who's invited you into their heart, into their lives, we ask that you would fill them now, fill them now with the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, who leads, directs, teaches, guides, counsels, comforts. We thank you, Rock Hapidesh, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence, O oh God. We bless you, Lord. There's no one else like you. You created us and you formed us. You knew us in our mother's womb. What a privilege and an honor. You have such good plans for every one of us, Lord. We desire to walk, to dance into those good plans, Lord not caring what the world thinks about us, but our eyes on you, wanting to satisfy your heart. So we say, come, Lord Jesus, come now. Increase, increase, oh God. And we thank you for first loving us. We love you, Lord. And we bless you this day, Lord, on the 70th anniversary of National Day of Prayer. We praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. And if you prayed that prayer and invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior and Lord, then we encourage you to get connected to a Bible-based, Holy Spirit-led church. And if you're a man, get connected to a men's Bible study. And if you're a woman, get connected to a women's Bible study and join in prayer. There are wonderful ministries also throughout California for men and, and for women separately if you'd like and we just say thank you father thank you lord we bless you lord praise you lord we're going to ask trisha to close us in a song before um, before wolfgang and i share a final word thank you all trisha. And I just release this blessing the priestly blessing that our abadati gave to aaron the high priest, the first high priest to release over his people. And if you have asked Yeshua to be your savior, even if you just did, you've been grafted into the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this blessing from Papa is for you. And it marks you as blessed and belonging to him. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you his shalom. Shalom Yeshua, nothing missing, nothing broken, wholeness and healing over the state of California and over the United States of America. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tricia. We also would like to mention Valerie Jackson, who is, is the director of the Prayer Council of the United States, which many of us are also on the leadership team with. And she also is the founder of Gateway Ministry, um, who is part of this also today, but she had an appointment. And so we just bless, bless, bless Valerie Jackson and all that she sets her heart and hands to, Lord, through a Glow International, where we first met her. 
And now the Lord moved her on to other things. So that's what our God does. He will have you set for a while someplace, and then he will remove you and he might extend your tent pegs. So we just say thank you, Father, for precious Valerie Jackson. And we just love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We do call for justice, truth, liberty, life, life, life over California. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we bless. We ask you to abundantly, exceedingly bless every single person who participated in this California National Day of Prayer Zoom call, the intercessors who are listening in and coming into prayer agreement, Lord God. We thank you for your presence that is just so beautiful and that you just let us Holy Spirit, oh, how we love you. And God, just thank you for blessing each and every person here in California into the saving grace and knowledge of who you are and what you say and no more compromise of your word. Oh, God, thank you, Holy Spirit, for convicting us when we start to go off to the left or the right and we don't follow that narrow pathway that leads into eternal salvation. We thank you, Father, for that. We call forth your justice. You are righteous. We call forth your just justice with mercy, God. Mercy triumphs judgment. But we thank you, Father. You have held your hand back off of California for such a long time that you see those who are faithful to you, the remnant. And I just say thank you, Father, for all those bold and courageous ones who don't care about what people think, but just want to bring a smile to your heart, Lord. We thank you and bless them indeed, God. Amen. Brother Welfing, thank you so much. What a joy you are um, on our Pray California Board of Directors. What a joy you are as a co-host on the Zoom call and other calls we've done together. And what a joy you are as just a beloved son of the most high, magnificent, majestic God. <laughs> Final thoughts do you have, Wolfgang? Yes. I want to thank uh, each and every person that uh, persevered today through the call, uh, that in grace and in love and in unity uh, really displayed honor and respect for each other, for the body of Christ. Uh, although we had some difficulties, we overcame them. We were led by the Holy Spirit. It was a beautiful example of being led by the Holy Spirit and for everything to come through that the Lord had for us. So his grace, the Lord's grace is upon us. And we honor the National Day of Prayer on this 70th year anniversary with love, life and liberty, which was exemplified today in a beautiful way. Amen. Amen. We're, we're closing this with the Lord of the Shofars. And some of you, I see some of you on this call, you were part of the Shofar a blowing where we just all sent one blow in. Uh, Trisha and Wolfgang and myself and Brother Art Perilous, Arthur Aaron Perilous, Perilous and others on this call who sent in one long blow. And Wolfgang put them all together for us. And we're sealing it. We're sealing this call, Lord God. Now with blowing of the shofar, we ask you, oh God, to send your warring angels to go and do your bidding according to the prayers, declarations, and petitions that we released. Oh God. And we thank you for doing that. Lord, we declare your kingdom come, your will be done, oh God, here in California, as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. And we, we all say this together. California blesses Israel. Yeah. California blesses Israel. Let the sounds go forth.